Hey guys, it's Ryan here, or Northern Lion, I guess, depending on how well you know me. And I'm just going to be doing a quick video today to kind of touch on a question, or answer a question, uh, that I get very, very frequently in my YouTube inbox, on Twitter, on Reddit, whenever I post. This is probably the most asked question that doesn't relate to the Binding of Isaac challenge runs, or whether or not I'm going to get back into playing Dark Souls. And that question is, you know, how do you start a gaming channel, how do you grow your YouTube channel, and, and market yourself effectively without being a total creep? Uh, and this is an issue that I know and care a lot about. I'm not trying to make it seem like I'm some kind of savant when it comes to YouTube marketing or anything like that, because most of the fact that I'm successful today is attributed by me to luck and research with tools that are out there uh, that have helped me to basically get to where I am today. So I'm going to be talking about five uh, very easy, very applicable tips uh, that those of you who run gaming channels can use to instantly, without being a total scumbag, uh, use to increase the marketability of your YouTube channel. Now, as always, there is a lot of luck that goes into uh, becoming bigger on YouTube, whether bigger to you means, you know, getting to 500 subscribers or getting to 200,000. Although, if you're getting to 200,000, please message me with tips, because I could use them too. Uh, so, not all of these tips are guarantees to make your YouTube channel enormous. It's just things you can do that will increase the chances uh, that you can grow in the future. So, tip number one, I'm going to talk a little bit about networking. You always hear this... Uh, kind of an adage in the YouTube community that the best way to grow your channel is to network. You gotta network, you gotta get with bigger YouTube channels, do collaborations with them, like like each other's videos. There is a nugget of truth to this, in my opinion, and remember that this is all gonna be in my opinion, from my experience. Uh, but in my experience, this is kind of too broad uh, of something to say. Just like, yeah, just network with bigger channels, because if you have a smaller channel, you've probably tried this and found that uh, larger channels are not that likely to really give you the time of day. So the number one tip I have for networking, and the number one mistake I see small channels making, is that you should never mass message or just like cold message other YouTubers. Like, I probably get between 10 and 20 requests to do co-commentaries a day from complete strangers, and this is just on like YouTube messaging. A lot of YouTubers don't even check their YouTube messages because it's all just spam, it's all just people trying to like market themselves. It's like when you're walking down the street in like New York or something and some guy's just handing out a CD, like check out my CD, check out my CD. Like, I've already got too much to do on my own end to be like looking at all of these messages and being like, oh sure, I'll just set up 20 collaborations today with people that I've never met before in my entire life. This is the wrong way to go about trying to network your channel. Uh, I don't know of any situation I've ever come across, at least with my own personal experience, where a big YouTuber has just gotten a random message and, and said like, oh sure, let's just do it tomorrow. And in fact, most of those messages usually aren't even personal. They have like 20 guys in the, uh, like the two field, like who the message is being sent to. So I'm like, oh cool, you want to do a co-commentary with me, the Syndicate Project, PewDiePie, etc, etc. Uh, so that's just really impersonal, and as far as I know, it's never worked. So you might be saying, what does work? Uh, my, in my experience, again, this is all personal, uh, I think back to the co-commentaries I've done recently, and in particular, a really good case study here is the race that I did with Green9090 and Zen and Cyrene. But I'm going to be talking about Green specifically, because he was the one that kind of started this whole process of me getting into that race and getting to know them. So, how did Green get in touch with me? Green was a relatively small YouTuber, not to shit talk him or anything, but he was at like 4,000, 5,000 subscribers. Uh, and normally, I, I probably would, if he just cold messaged me, would have no idea who he was. But the number one way that I knew who he was is that first, uh, he was very active in like social media and all my videos. So the way that he kind of became known to me is I would always see him comment, I would see him like post up on Twitter, ask me some questions and, and send messages to me like that. Kind of like interacting with me about my content and the content that we both make. That's the number two tip is that, you know, we both make the same kind of content. So it's good to A, find YouTubers in your niche who make like the same kind of content. Green makes a lot of Isaac content. You know, if, if I was to message a big YouTuber and try to do a co-commentary, this would never work in a hundred years for a number of reasons, but I would think like, okay, I make this Let's Look At series, Total Biscuit makes WTF is. Maybe like if I interacted with him, I, we can get in touch and, and make something work. Uh, not just because, you know, it would be a good marketing thing, but because we make the same kind of content and maybe our audiences would overlap and everyone would have a lot more fun in those co-commentaries. So that's how Green got in with me and that's my biggest suggestion uh, to you is to find YouTubers who are in your niche. Don't just mass message people with over like X thousand subscribers. Uh, find like specific people in your niche who make the same kind of content, interact with them on their videos, be active, watch their content, interact with them on social media, and, and then hopefully uh, you'll come to their attention. And you might be saying like, Northern Line, I can't do that with 500 YouTubers. Like, there might be a 2% chance or a 10% chance that this YouTuber will go for it. Uh, that's not good enough for me, like I need to have numbers. Well, unfortunately, that's kind of the, the crapshoot of YouTube. Not everybody you try this strategy with is it's gonna work, or it's gonna work on, shall we say. 
Uh, and, you know, beyond that, maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> like, the fact that you're focusing on only a couple of people that you want to network with makes it more meaningful. Like, again, if Green was messaging, like, Nova all the time, publicly, I probably would have been like, eh, this guy's just looking to market, but he had this idea, and I saw, I said, yeah, that would make really good content, and that's awesome. I'm kind of rambling here with respect to networking. The other thing I just wanted to say with respect to networking was be honest with yourself. Would their audience like you? The thing is, like, I'm not trying to say I have a very professional setup here, but I have an okay setup. My audio quality is adequate. My video quality is pretty good most of the time. If you're, like, a 10-year-old kid with an onboard laptop microphone who gets, like, a frame rate of 5 frames per second, are we really going to have a good video? Like, is my audience going to like your content? Probably not, and that's going to go for uh, most other YouTubers as well. So, in, with respect to networking, this is probably going to be what I'm going to talk about the most. So don't worry if it's gone on too long already. Number one, don't mass message YouTubers, you're wasting your time. You can apply your marketing efforts elsewhere and get a way better return on your time. Uh, beyond that, actually engage with these people. Like, get into them, watch their content, comment on their videos, engage them on social media. They're people, they're not just a way for you to grow your channel. And beyond that, have something to offer them that makes for interesting content for them as well. When I think about people I've done co-commentaries with, you know, Cry, Chaotic Monkey, Immortal HD, uh, Green 9090, and Zen, uh, that, that's what comes to mind. That's how I choose people to do co-commentaries with. Although I don't do, do co-commentaries too often. Uh, the second thing that I'm going to talk about, and this is by far the most important thing that you can do solo to market your videos. I really can't stretch, stress this enough. Uh, is to tag your videos properly and extensively. Now, most people, or at least most small channels, uh, have a tendency to kind of tag just off the cuff. Like, they think that the tags aren't that important. Like, they're already like, I've made the hard work, I've done the video, I've titled it, I've uploaded it, the hard work is done, tags, we're just gonna put like, Minecraft, Minecraft, Minecraft mod, etc, etc. Video game, let's play, like, Putting those tags in is not going to do you any favors. You might be asking why tags are important. Tags are feeding into the search algorithm for YouTube, basically. So the better your tags, or whatever tags you use, that's what's going to influence uh, where you show up, what terms you show up for in the YouTube search. For example, if I made a video on Minecraft, and I titled it, let's say, Let's Play Diablo 3, and in the tags I just, like, spammed Diablo 3 tags, I would probably show up in searches for Diablo 3, but not in searches for, for Minecraft. If that makes any sense. Hopefully that does make sense. Why is search traffic important? It's the most underrated source of traffic I can possibly imagine. Everyone talks about networking, doing collaborations. Yes, collaborations are great for like a one-time boost in subscribers. If you do a collaboration with a big YouTuber, you could get 2,000 subscribers in one day. Depending on the size of the YouTuber, you could probably get like 15,000 in one day. Uh, but search traffic is more slow and steady growth. Search traffic is the kind of thing that can give you like five more subscribers a day for the next three years, which adds up substantially over time and over each video. So what you want to do with your tags? Always, if you can, fill up the tag box. And you might be saying, I can't think of that many tags for my game. Here's the method I use. It's the method I've used for years. Uh, keep in mind that the search algorithm is still influenced by like the size of your channel. So the more views you get, the higher you're going to rank for search terms. The more likes you get, the more time that people spend watching the video now factors into it. Nobody knows the exact algorithm except for the wizards and warlocks at Google. Uh, but that is all covered in a document that I will explain in tip number five. What you want to do for tagging, or what I do for tagging, is I almost have like two columns in my brain uh, for each video, and I kind of pick one Entry from column one, one entry from column two, and match them together to make a tag. So column one is just going to be the game name, as well as any variations on the game name. So for example, let's say I'm playing XCOM. This is actually a pretty good example for just coming off the top of my head. Uh, when I was let's playing XCOM, column one is just the game name and variation. So I had like XCOM, one word. XCOM with a dash in the middle. Uh, XCOM with a space. And that could just fill out, like... The left column. I could also do like XCOM colon enemy unknown, XCOM space enemy unknown, X dash com colon enemy unknown, etc, etc. You can see how that can iterate beyond that. Uh, so I have this column, let's say there's like three ones I want to go with. XCOM, X dash com, let's just go with two for now. And then the right column, I have kind of descriptors of what the video could be. Things that people commonly search for uh, when they also put in a game name first. So for a let's play, or for a first impressions type video, you might consider words like gameplay, video, review, uh, platforms that the game is on, like PC, Xbox 360, PS3, Wii, Wii U, etc, etc. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else I use on a regular basis. Just the word game also works well a lot of the time. 
Uh, if you have anything like if it's a walkthrough, walkthrough, let's play, LP, things like that. So now I have two columns. One is XCOM, X-COM. The other one, just descriptors, gameplay, video, review, walkthrough, etc, etc. To make my tags, I just pick and match all of those basically. I just mash them together until the tag box is full. So it would be like XCOM game, XCOM gameplay, XCOM, XCOM first impressions, XCOM review, XCOM PC, XCOM Steam, etc, etc. Then again, X-COM game, X-COM gameplay. That sounds annoying for me to hear, so I'm not gonna go over that too much. But seriously, this is the number one tip that I always tell people when they're like, how do I grow my YouTube channel? Tag the shit out of your videos. It's the easiest thing in the world. It takes five minutes, and it is indeed not understating this, or not overstating the importance of this, the single biggest thing that you can do by yourself individually in the shortest amount of time to improve the chances of your videos being discovered. Seriously, the way my channel grows is primarily through search traffic. There's some word of mouth. There's some, you know, people telling their friends, etc., etc. Largely search traffic. That's how I've gotten to where I am today. And that's how I'm, like, basing my tagging strategy about getting to where I want to be, you know, a year or two years from now. Seriously, tag your videos properly and extensively. I'll talk a little bit more about this in uh, tip five. But seriously, take tip two. I was going to say to the grave, but that doesn't really make sense. Take it to heart, shall we say. Tip three, and this really should have been tip one because it's, like, step one of starting a channel. Get a good audio video setup, or an AV setup, as I'll refer to it now in the future. I see a lot of videos, I get a lot of uh, messages every day from people being like, Hey, can you check out my video? I, I want to know, like, what I need to work on. Sometimes I watch them, I, I rarely do, because again, this is the kind of thing where you get like 30 or 40 messages a day for. Uh, but the number one complaint that I have is that a lot of people are just using shitty microphones. Like, they're using Xbox 360 headsets, or they're using uh, laptop onboard microphones, things like that. Uh, and it just, it sounds bad, like maybe you hear like the computer fan, or they've got like ambient audio in the background that sounds garbage. A big myth in the, the community here is that you need like a, a professional setup to go anywhere, and that's just not true. I'm using a, a fairly expensive microphone, I think it was a couple of hundred dollars, but for the first year of my channel's life, I was not. I was using a $20 Logitech USB desktop microphone. You can literally just, just Google Logitech USB desktop microphone. Uh, and you'll discover the exact one that I use. And this is what I used to get me from zero subscribers up to like 22,000 basically. Probably closer to 30,000 because I didn't get this microphone until earlier in the last year. You don't need like a blue snowball or a blue Yeti or some kind of amazing microphone plugged into an audio mixer to get started. It helps, but all you need is competent sounding audio. And you can get that with, like I said, like a $20 microphone. Uh, Logitech is not paying me, by the way. It's just a great product. Uh, beyond that, number two complaint. Bad frame rate, poor video quality, uh, bad resolutions, basically. This is a little bit more complicated to fix, but it's borderline necessary as more and more people get into this industry. I hate to say it, if your frame rate is bad, you need to either invest in uh, a better computer or at least upgrading it to a certain extent. Fraps is notorious for lagging computers. You need like a, a pretty beastly computer to run new games in 30 or 60 frames per second with Fraps recording in the background. Uh, unfortunately, it's kind of a, a necessary trade-off here that you need to give that money in order to be able to provide that quality. Uh, a lot of people aren't gonna be able to do that and that's fine. Maybe focus on playing older games that you can still record uh, adequately. Older games that you love and can bring some kind of like attention to or some kind of insight into. Uh, rather than new games where you're gonna play like five frames per second and, and people are not gonna watch it. Uh, if you're recording from consoles, you are gonna need to buy a capture device. I use the HD PVR2. I would not recommend it, even though it does record from HDMI, which the HD PVR1 did not. The HD PVR1, I think, is a fantastic device. It only records, records from component, though, uh, which is not ideal for a, a lot of future consoles, shall we say. Um, but there are other alternatives I encourage you to look into. In any case, I'll leave you with a quick analogy here. And that's what I think that AV quality is kind of like brushing your teeth. Bad AV quality is like the single biggest turnoff that you can have in a video. If somebody turns on your video and five seconds in, you just sound like totally garbled and the frame rate's terrible. People are just not going to watch, no matter what you do for marketing. Uh, these days, anyway, it might have been different in the older days. So it's kind of like, you know, brushing your teeth. Brushing your teeth, even if you brush your teeth really, really well, it's not likely to get you that many dates by itself. But not brushing your teeth is very likely to lose you a lot of dates. Like, people are going to be turned off by your bad breath in the same way people are going to be turned off by bad video and audio. Again, doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't always have to be super crisp HD ultra settings. It just has to be competent, and a lot of the videos that I see are not. So make an investment in that, find a way to get it done uh, if you can. Spend as little money as possible and, uh, you know, start your, I don't want to say career, start your hobby, shall we say. Tip number four is a personal tip. 
uh, that I don't see happening or showing up all that often uh, elsewhere on the internet and the communities that I go to for Let's Playing. But this is, I think it's a good idea to release your videos on a set schedule. Not just uh, to get people thinking that, like, anticipating your videos essentially, like waiting for the release of your videos because it's consistent, uh, but also just to help you organize your workload. So what I do is I release three videos a day or two videos a day now because there's a little bit less new gaming content coming out for now, but it is going to go back to three videos a day. Uh, what I do is I just plan. I say Monday 3, Tuesday 3, Wednesday 3, etc, etc, and then I work in advance of that to make it happen. So what I would encourage you to do is determine realistically how often you can record games. You know, a lot of you are going to be in school, a lot of you are going to be working other full-time jobs, you have families, you have hobbies, social lives, etc, etc. Three videos a day is probably going to be impractical for a lot of you. You don't have to record three videos a day, or upload three videos a day, rather, to be a YouTube personality. Lots of YouTube personalities do varying degrees of frequency. Some do seven a day, uh, and many do, you know, one a day, or even three a week, or one a week. What you have to do is realistically determine, in my opinion, how often you can record, uh, and then stick to it. So if you say, okay, realistically, I could probably, maybe I could do 15 videos this week, but I can only do seven next week. Maybe I should just do like four a week from now on, just to plan for like worst case scenarios or something like that, or five a week. Anyway, what I'm trying to get at is set a schedule. Maybe you say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm going to upload. How do you reach that goal? Like, because sometimes real life gets in the way. Another huge tip, when you have time, record in batches. This is the simplest thing in the world. If you have three hours, don't record one video, render it, you know, eat dinner, go take a nap. Record three or four videos all at once, uh, you know, partition them as you see fit, render them out, and get them ready. Now that YouTube has that scheduled uploader, you could technically, if you wanted to release a video a day, record seven videos in one day, render them out, upload them all overnight with the scheduled uploader, which many of you should have. I don't think that's a partner-only thing anymore for every channel anyway. Uh, and just set them to upload like 9 a.m. every day. This is how I keep a schedule. I always work with a backlog. Whenever I have a lot of time, I record a lot of videos so that when I don't have a lot of time, like when I'm traveling to go to a convention or I went home for the holidays, uh, or if I just want to take a couple of days off, then what I can do is just be like, okay, I have six videos in the can right now that have already been rendered. I can just set those for scheduled uploads and, and nobody's the wiser, basically. Like, you're still meeting your content limit. So that's my tip. Use the scheduled uploader to meet a realistic upload schedule that you set. It doesn't have to be one a day. Could be three a week, could be one a week. Although, if, if you're doing one a week, make sure that video's damn good because almost no Let's Players that I know upload only one video a week and, and manage to grow their channel huge. Finally, I'm glad we're keeping this under 20 minutes. I thought it was going to be like five. Uh, but my final tip is very, very simple. Read the YouTube Creator's Playbook or Handbook or whatever they're calling it these days. YouTube, it's the best kept secret for some reason. Uh, in the YouTube community is that there's this document, the YouTube Playbook, and basically it has all the tips that I've talked about here, as well as hundreds and hundreds more uh, laid out for YouTube channels on how to grow their channel in a non-scammy way. Like, I'm, this is not, the reason I hate doing videos like this a lot of the time is because people always think like, oh, marketing your channel is scammy. It's not. Marketing your channel is, like, just something you should do if you've already put in the hard work on the content. Just make your videos clean, make them good, and try to get them out to as many people as possible. Don't mass message people, but follow the tips uh, that can just like kind of ambiently improve your success. But anyway, YouTube Creator Playbook, I'll put a link in the video description. I seriously, if, if you have a YouTube channel, doesn't matter if it's got 50,000 or 10 subscribers, read this document. You will find more tips that will help you out a lot. This thing seriously, you, there's a lot of gold to mine uh, with respect to the content in the YouTube Playbook. And I guarantee, personally, you can read through the whole thing in 45 minutes. It is invaluable. It, it's basically YouTube telling you how to get bigger on YouTube. And again, the tips are super, super not spammy. In any case, hopefully this video uh, provided you guys with some benefit, and hopefully this causes kind of a decrease in the amount of questions that I get related to, uh, you know, how to grow your channel on YouTube. These are all five non-scumbaggy ways, if we want to go over them quickly at the end here. For networking, make a real connection to a YouTuber in your niche, and uh, maybe they will take more notice of you. Tag the shit out of your videos, make them exhaustive, and tag them properly. Don't tag them with things that are not in the video, that's a terms of service violation. Uh, probably the worst way to market your YouTube channel is to get it banned. Uh, three, get a good AV setup. You don't have a good mic? Logitech USB desktop mic for 20 bucks. If you want to get a better mic, you can look into that uh, on other Let's Play communities. They can probably give you some good advice. Uh, release your videos on a set schedule that is realistic, so try not to release, you know, 10 videos one week and one video the next. Not every YouTuber follows this tip, this is just something that I have found to help me personally organize my workload. And finally, read the YouTube playbook, man, it's super easy, 
Uh, it has a lot of great tips. The single most valuable document if you are a YouTube creator of any kind. In any case, hopefully uh, at least some of you out there got some benefit out of this video. And in any case, I will see you guys next time. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.